All right, it's uh, almost seven minutes past nine and it is uh, the weekend of the Ireland Camogie Finals uh, Sunday. Croke Park is the venue to be. Delighted to say that we're joined on the line by Sarah Donovan to look ahead to them. Morning to you, Sarah. Good morning, how are you? Good. I, I was. It feels like only, and it was not that long ago, only a few months that we were um, sat here chatting about split seasons and uh, club versus county and uh, uh, football versus camogie and all sorts of uh, story sponsorship is- issues and all that sort of stuff. The year started out so badly, Sarah. Feels to have been over the last while, and look, we'll see in terms of attendances now on Sunday, but it feels like over the last while the semi-finals were good. The narrative around Camogie is in a better place now. They've gotten their act together. Look, it's not ideal that there isn't a sponsor for Sunday, but the Camogie Association had banked nearly two million last year because of COVID. So they're in a comfortable place to run the season without a sponsor, but they'll need a sponsor for next season. So I suppose Sunday is their showpiece event. They'll have to show everything and get people interested again, you know, for next year and for building for the future. Yeah, the football is obviously leading the way in terms of attendances and and uh, and interest and that kind of thing. What's your expectation of how many we'll get on uh, on Sunday? Look, Cork haven't been there since 2018. Um, it feels to me like it's Paddy Murray's last hurrah. I think there's lots of things about Cork that are very positive. Uh, great support for the Cork girls from West Cork, from East Cork, from the city. I'd hope there'd be big numbers travel for Cork on Sunday because Cork is a very passionate Camogie County. So the only way they can show that support is by turning up. Yeah, you got to see them up close in July. If you're giving some advice to Galway this weekend, what is it? They're going to have to go high. So, you know, Hannah Looney loves to run the ball. You can't allow her to run the ball because they create an overlap and all of a sudden it's in Amy O'Connor's hand. So I think Galway are going to have to press them really high to stop them from playing the ball through the lines. Yeah. Um, the, the the suspensions the, for both sides or lack of has been sort of one of the talking points obviously in the lead into it um, Orla Cronin very experienced player obviously three game suspension sent off against Kenny in the semis potentially she'll get back into it I think there's an appeal uh, tonight if I'm right to the uh, hearings uh, post the hearings committee um, so who knows maybe she comes back into it but Linda Collins uh, the replacement if she's out unbelievable composure created a little bit of space at the end of the last game are they are they lacking much if that plays out the way it currently sits? Well, Linda's actually been named now regardless of Orla. So Paddy's named 14 players uh, for his team on Sunday. So if Orla's suspension doesn't okay. come forward, Yeah, so if, if she isn't included, then there'll be somebody else parachuted in uh, at very late notice. Okay. Obviously that player knows at this point, I imagine. But Linda's kind of put up her hand now with that score. Um, I think she was very composed both before and after the game in the semi-final, you know, it was a massive ask for her to come in and win the game for Cork as captain, being so disappointed, being left on the bench for her teammate from Corsi's. So she's answered a lot of questions. I do feel, though, that without Orla, Cork could be under a bit of pressure. I've, I've mentioned during the week that Orla is great to transition the ball, so Orla will go back really deep, 45 to her own 45, and carry the ball up through the lines, and Cork don't have a player as comfortable on the ball as Orla to do that role in such a short space of time. Yeah, and like captain, because like you said, they, they, they have that system where you win the county and uh, so you get to nominate a player and that's why she comes in. And to be fair, it started most of the games, I think, up to the semi-final and then comes in and like the mentality and the maturity at, I think, only 24, but probably still maybe one of the senior players to to step up and put all that disappointment to one side and, and show that leadership, which is a real quality, again, that you're looking for on big days like Sunday. I was surprised she had been left out, to be honest, because in the game that we played against them, Linda has a great talent of bringing players into the game. So she plays in these little small pockets and then it's a little pass here, a little jink there. And she gets Katrina Mackey into the game, Orla Cronin into the game, Amy O'Connor into the game. Players like that are so, so versatile, but so, so crucial to teams. So hopefully this will be la- this, that event will be Linda's last day on the bench. What, um, like Cork seemed to have, looking at the profile of the team generally, looked to have struck that balance between like some of the younger players coming in and obviously some of the more experienced heads that are still there as well. Um, and as you say, back in the final for the first time in a few years. Should the rest be, be worried uh, in some ways, Sarah, just that, that that's coming right now in a period that, like when you look at the profile of the team, in some ways looks like it's almost a transi- transition period, but still reaching the final. Yeah, I, I suppose the problem is that Hannah Looney's already expressed her intention to leave after this season. Um, I don't know what Ashley Thompson's thoughts will mm. be. You know, they've been around a long time, even though they're very young. But I suppose from Cork's angle, 
They were in a minor All-Ireland final, which they lost to Kilkenny last week. They won the under-16 a month ago. There are players coming through, but the likes of Hannah probably needs to stay around for a couple of years, Pamela Mackey, Katrina Mackey, just to get those players through. We're asking an awful lot of them to give 10 years to Cork, but I suppose Sunday will tell a lot because they need to win on Sunday. They, they've been away from the top table for too long. Yeah. What do you do with Chloe Sigerson? <laughs> if I was Galway, oh geez, I think she's unmarkable. And anywhere on the pitch, she'll open up the shoulders and, and it's a guaranteed score. You have to stop her from getting ball in hand, you know? So that's a pretty miserable job from one of the Galway players. But there are the players there to do that. And I suppose Galway's defence is probably very settled. Um, what I'd be concerned about from a court point of view is that Galway's bench ha has a lot of weight. So Rebecca Henley can come in, Neil McGrath can come in, Tara Kenny can come in. Galway are missing Heather Cooney through a cruciate injury, but, you know, like Siobhan Gardner, Emma Hellebert, and then, of course, Captain Fantastic Sarah Durvin going for her fourth um, year as captain. She is a, a, a mountain inside there. You know, she's a rock. You know, mm. I, I, she's the equivalent of the rock. And Cork are going to be under a lot of pressure on Sunday to retain possession and get scores. Yeah, and uh, and from the Galway point of view, Paulie Murray checked that same thing that you were mentioning in terms of the the depth that's there, and like you know maybe if it's tight late in the game, then that's something that that comes into play a bit, and that may be where they have the upper hand a little bit. I I think that's where they have the upper hand. Neve McGrath is basically a direct replacement for Neve Kilkenny. Neve has umpteen All Irelands, um, an incredible camogie player is working in Dublin with William Fry and I, I, I imagine that's probably why she, you know, is, is out of the, the starting 15 right now. But for her to be able to parachute in for Neil Kilkenny if something was to go wrong, Cork don't have that same experience on the bench. Yeah. And what are you what are you thinking in terms of how it plays out there in terms like the expanses of Crow Park, which teams uh, which team that suits better or or in terms of key matchups, what are you thinking? Uh, looking at the brass facts on the match the last day I thought Cork and Kilkenny was a much better game. Um, I thought Cork's striking was much better, so they were spraying ball much, much better. But I suppose I'd just be conscious that Galway were there in December. They were at the All-Ireland final, obviously lost to Kilkenny. They were mm. there again at the end of May, start of June in the league final. They've been in Croke Park a number of times and haven't left themselves down. I thought the last day against Tipperary, the Galway inside line was quiet. Orla McGrath, Siobhan McGrath, Ailish O'Reilly. They'll have watched that match back. They'll be disappointed they're going to come out all guns blazing. And I suppose you'd rather that they had a brilliant game in the semi-final, shot the lights out, and then came into the final nearly over-pressured. Whereas now I think they have something to prove. Yeah. I mean, I, w I wasn't sure if if Kilkenny had come through on the other side. Is that a better thing for thing for Galway in terms of like the disappointment of last year and trying to put that to bed? I mean, I'm sure they'll have themselves well psyched for Cork either way. Yeah, look, there's a healthy rivalry between the three top teams. There's a point in it every year. Like I suppose Cork will feel that refereeing decisions went against them against Galway in the last couple of games. Um, they'll be, I suppose, anxious for a fair day. Um, and Galway, by comparison, beat Kilkenny uh, three weeks ago by a point in the, in the group stages. So I suppose they'll feel they've put that one to bed and now it's Cork and now it's a clear run to, to the Hogan stand. And what's going to happen? My head says that there's a lot of momentum with Cork for this one, so I think Cork are going to win by two. Wow, right. Tight game. Uh, we take it. What about the, the intermediate final? Is the curtain raiser to that Antrim Kilkenny? Yeah, so Kilkenny and Antrim. Uh, Kil Antrim were in the All-Ireland final last year in December against Down. I was up at it in Breffney Park. Uh, Kilkenny are, I suppose, an unknown entity. The last time they won the All-Ireland was 2016, and Leanne Fenley's back, centre back for them. She was in Australia for six years. So you've got some great stories around the Kilkenny team. But Maeve Kelly from Antrim is an outstanding camogie player. And I think Antrim will feel, having lost the Northern Derby last year, they're coming back to Croke Park this time to prove something. So my money's on Antrim. All right. Well, look, it's going to be a brilliant day at uh, Croke Park on Sunday. We hope the crowds come out and the weather stays good and the games are good as well. Sarah, well previewed. Thanks a million. No worries. Thanks. Thanks.